you want to put the needle and then at the same time you need to plug the USB flash drive to the USB port. Hello guys, welcome to the channel. Today we'll be looking at this Transcend USB 3.0 16GB flash drive. It doesn't want to work. I don't know what happened to it, but when I inserted it to the computer, the LED flashes once and then it disappears and Windows doesn't recognize it. Windows Explorer doesn't see it at all. I tried it on a few different computers and none of them seem to recognize it. So I just wanted to show you guys how you can fix it if you're facing this exact same issue. So today we'll be trying to fix this USB drive, see if it's going to be repairable. There are two kinds of problems that you can face with this USB flash drives. One is going to be the software problem, another one is going to be the hardware problem. If it's a software problem, it can be fixed pretty easy. And this is what I'm going to show you in this video. But if that doesn't help, then it's probably going to be a hardware problem and you're going to have to replace some components on this PCB. It could be a problem with the controller or some other components. So yeah, that one's gonna require some soldering. We're not gonna do that today. But anyway, let's get started. And if you're new to the channel, please take a second to subscribe, click the notification bell so you don't miss new videos. And if you find this video helpful, give it a like. I appreciate it very much and let's get started. Okay, so let's go ahead and first confirm the issue, make sure that's, that's what it is. I'm just gonna go ahead and plug it into the USB port on the back here. As you might have seen, it only flashed one and then it just turned off. If we look up in the computer over here, as you can see, no USB has been recognized, which means it doesn't see that USB stick at all. Okay, so let's go ahead and take apart this USB stick. But as a disclaimer, you're doing this at your own risk. If something goes wrong, the USB stick could be completely damaged. But since this USB flash drive is not working anyway, it doesn't matter, I'm gonna try it and see if it's gonna work. This particular USB stick consists of two pieces and they're connected together. We just gotta open them and then we can get to the internals of this USB stick. So I just use a small screwdriver and just fit it over here and then just press it a little bit until it kinda opens up. As you can see right now it's already opened up. There we go, so I got it opened up. And here's our USB stick. Here's your memory over here. This is your controller. So let's just go ahead and inspect it and see if there is any physical damage to it. There is another flash memory here. So it is a 16 gigabyte. So each one is gonna be eight gigabyte. It doesn't look like it's damaged at all, but it doesn't mean that it's not damaged. So here's a model for the memory, TCG stap-0s06 and here's the number for the controller there we go so this is how it looks under the microscope as you can see these are the contacts for the usb connector there are nine legs connecting to the circuit board then there are other things on the circuit board if everything looks good and there's nothing burnt on the circuit board that means that it's probably all right and this is just a firmware problem but anyway it's good to inspect it with a microscope. This way you can see if there is anything burned. And by the way, this is your flash memory. This is a 16 gigabyte USB stick. It got two memory chips, eight gigabyte each. Let's go ahead and check out what's on the other side. So yeah, this is the chip on the other side. And as you can see, there is nothing else on this side. Everything is mint, so this is pretty good. It's a USB 3.0, so it's a pretty fast USB. Almost every flash memory, they fall into the same standards. So there are 24 pins on this side and there are 24 pins on this side. So the total is 48 pins. And the count for these pins, they're starting from the dot. As you can see here, there is a dot over here. So it starts from this one. So this is gonna be the pin number one. Then it's gonna be one, two, three, four, five. So going to the 24th, this one's gonna be the 25th. So it's gonna counterclockwise. We need to touch two pins the 29 and 30 at the same time. So we need to connect them together and you can use like a thick needle for that. So what you wanna do, you wanna count four pins from here. One, two, three, four. And then between the fifth and the sixth one, you wanna put the needle. And then at the same time, you need to plug the USB flash drive to the USB port. And then as, as soon as you see the LED flash, you can remove the needle and it's gonna get into the test mode. This will allow us to recover the firmware for this USB stick 
for this controller. Over here, you can read how to transfer a flash drive to the test mode. There is a lot of information how to do that. If you want to read out, this might help you to understand better than what I explained. But as you can see here, it shows you the flash memory and these are all the legs on each side. So there are 24 on each side, 48 altogether. And we need to connect the number 29 and number 30 together and then insert the USB stick into the port. So you can just follow through that link on the top here and read through all the information in this article. So you have to hold the pin 29 and pin 30 for two seconds for one to two seconds and once you hear the beep or you see the LED light starts to flash just go ahead and remove it and it should enter the test mode. In some USB flash drives the flash memory doesn't have the pins and you cannot access them because you're using different technology such as ball grid array or land grid array. In this case you cannot get to the pins and connect two pins together. If that's what you have on your USB flash drive you can also try to connect two pins on the controller but you need to know what controller you have and you can find the part number located right on the top of the controller. So here is how the controller looks like. It's like a small square chip on the circuit board with metal legs attaching it to the circuit board. And this is actually the first method that I've tried, but it is more complicated. You need to do more research depending on what controller you have, what manufacturer of the controller and what model of the controller. There are different pins location and you need to know exactly which pins to connect together. And if you connect the wrong pins on the controller, it could just make more damage and it wouldn't work at all. Unlike on the flash memory, they are mostly universal. So if you connect the 29 and 30, it will most likely work no problem. It is pretty much the same procedure for every USB stick. But if it doesn't work for some reason, there are other pins you connect on the flash memory as well. So just read through that article more. They will explain a little bit more in detail that process. But just keep in mind, if you cannot get access to the pins on the flash memory, there are other ways you can transfer the USB stick to the test mode. Just keep that in mind. But like I said, you have to do a little bit more research on that as well. So there we go. We got our USB stick. Then I'm just using a, a simple needle. And we also got the USB extension cord. This will make it easier to connect the USB stick because it's much simpler to just connect it to the USB extension than to the computer itself. So yeah, you just put this USB stick like this. Don't plug it in yet because you don't want it to be connected right away. There we go. So as you can see, the LED has started to flash, which means the USB is recognized right now. So we're now going to have to repair the firmware for the controller and it should be working. So let's go ahead and go to the program right now. Once we figure out the model number of the controller, we can go to any search browser and type in the model number of the controller. Then just look through the search result and it should tell you what brand it is. As you can see in the second search result, it says IS916EN and the manufacturer is Inostore. So this is going to be the manufacturer of this controller. This is the information that we need to find the proper software for flashing this USB stick. Once we know what is our controller, we can go to the website called usbdav.ru. Once you get to this website, it has a lot of great information about how to fix different types of USB sticks or flash drives. So you just got to go to files. Then you just need to scroll down and find the controller that we have just figured out. It's going to be the inner store. If you have another controller, just choose the one that you have. You might have the Alcor Micro or Fizen. You might have any other one of these. So you got to choose the correct controller and just click on it. It's going to take you to the next page. And then on this page, you got to find the proper flasher for your controller. You got to find it by the name. Go to the user utilities. And you need to find the in store recovery tool. If you have other controller, you can't use the same program, but you're going to have to find the proper program for your controller. Because I have the in store IS916EN, this is what I need. I'm just going to click on it. Then it's taking you to another page. As you can see, it gives you a few different versions depending on what controller series you got. So I need this one here. And this is the program that I need. So I'm going to click and download it. And we're going to use it to flash the firmware for this controller 
on the USB sticks. So yeah, big thanks to this website that has a lot of great information and make it easier for people to find the proper information. And all this software that is free, it's free, but somebody need to gather it all in the one website. So yeah, just go ahead and close it. Then we're gonna go ahead and start the program. So as you can see, I have already downloaded and I'm just gonna start it. There we go. So then we just gotta click start and it's gonna start the recovery process. And it warns you that all the data will be removed from this USB stick memory. So you're gonna lose all the information. If you had some important information, this is not how you want to recover your USB stick. You have to go through a different recovery process. And this is gonna involve copying all the data from the flash memory before repairing this USB stick. But you need some special tools for that. So you cannot do that at home unless you own these tools. So in that case, you're probably better off just going to the repair shop and getting the information from that USB stick and then fixing the USB stick. Just keep that in mind. All right, the process is almost complete and we're getting a message that this location is not accessible. Don't worry, this is nothing to worry about it. It says the format has failed. This is normal, sometimes that happens. We just have to do a manual formatting. So go ahead and click OK. And it's gonna bring up another window. This is just a regular Windows formatting window. And as you can see, we got the full capacity. You gotta choose the file system, which is gonna choose FAT32. The allocation unit size, I'm just gonna choose 8192 bytes. Check the quick format and click start. It's gonna warn you that it's gonna remove all the data from the USB stick, but since it's already been restored, all the information is already gone, just click OK. There we go, the formatting is done. Let's go ahead and check out our USB stick. As you can see, it's recognized in the Windows File Explorer. It's got a full capacity. Let's go ahead and open up and just copy some file to it, see if it's working. There we go, I just copied the shortcut. It's one kilobyte, but that's all we need to confirm. There we go, so this USB stick has been successfully saved. All right, there we go, so the USB flash drive is fixed. Now we can remove it. As you can hear that sound, that means that it's been successfully removed. So one of the most common problems with this USB sticks, just losing their firmware or getting some mistakes, not being recognized. One of the most common problems is when you remove the USB stick without safely unplugging it. And what I mean by that is that you don't go to the safe unplug on Windows or other operating system and you just pull out the USB stick. This is what can cause this USB stick to malfunction. The firmware gets messed up and then it just doesn't work. So there you have it guys. This is how you fix this USB stick. And like I always say, if you know how to fix it, it doesn't take long, but if you don't know how to fix it, well, you can just throw it in a dumpster or you can spend forever trying to find the solution for it. So if you find this video helpful, please give it a like, subscribe to my channel for more interesting, helpful videos. It took me a while to find all this information for you guys and hopefully this was helpful. So make sure to support my channel. And if you have questions, comments, drop them down in the comment section below. But this is it for now. I hope you have a nice day. See you soon. Bye-bye.